Now that President Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un is over, how likely is the president to enjoy a surge in popularity? Will Trump's success on the world stage help him and the Republicans win votes in November? Or will a blue wave of elected Democrats take over Congress? Well, joining us to share some insights is American public opinion pollster and consultant Pat Cadell. Pat, it's been a while, but I know you've been doing this for a long time, going yes, back to I Jimmy have, Carter. Really. How surprised were you by this summit? Well, I was um, surprised that it took place. I mean, a few months ago, uh, you know, we were at, um, uh, in a very tense situation between us and the North Koreans. You know, then the summit was on, then it was off, and it was back on. You know, I, I watched yesterday and last night. I was actually up late watching some of it. You know, I thought it was a historical occasion. Um, you know, we are dealing with a rogue nuclear power. Donald Trump is doing his best to deal with this. And I think it should be encouraged. Then I watch some of the stations on cable and others, and they're attacking this. I mean, it, it, it dawns on me the old saw. If Donald Trump walked on water, their criticism be he couldn't swim. Two months ago, they were screaming, or two weeks, three weeks ago, he was going to get us, you know, back to confrontation. Six months ago, he's going to put us in a war. And he makes, he seems to be making some progress. Sometimes I worry that his political foes, both in the media and politically, um, you know, are rooting against America, which I think is a mistake politically. And as Michael Reagan would have said during, Michael uh, Deaver, excuse me, would say during the Reagan administration, the pictures are fantastic. I really don't care what you say. So I think it's going to help him. Um, and the president's ratings, remember, are key to uh, the outcome of midterm. So this cannot hurt him. I think the American people would like to see this resolved. It would be in the interest of peace, and it would be to everyone's benefit. Well, how likely uh, will this affect his popularity and support? Do you think he'll have well, a big bump out of this, or what will happen? No, I think he'll get some bump. I don't know that we can predict this yet totally in advance. Nothing concrete was necessarily set, but he did make progress on this. He showed himself to be a world leader, and, uh, you know, I just don't see how that hurts, hurts him. So I think he'll get a bump out of this for sure. And I didn't see many congressional Democratic leaders tweeting much or saying much in criticism. I mean, it was all from media pundits and so forth. But uh, why do you think they remained fairly silent? Well, because they, they have been upset. You know, the, prior to it, there were a lot of tweets. I did see Senator Coons today uh, on, from the Foreign Relations Committee on TV, and he was kind of degrading it, you know, or, you know um, <clears throat> the, uh, giving it kind of the, a friendly back of the hand. Um, and then going and then being critical. The, um, uh, I think the Democratic leadership is terrified. They don't know what to say. So far, they're preliminary to this. The people who constructed what I consider a disastrous deal in Iran has been to, you know, uh, if they had put as many restraints as they attempt to put on President Trump, on a Barack Obama, we might not have that disastrous deal in Iran. And despite 90 percent negative media uh, on oh. this president, uh, he still, I saw one poll that showed him about 1 percent more popular at this point of his presidency than both Obama and Reagan. How, how high would that be if he didn't have the negative from the media? Well, you know, if he got just fair treatment, I mean, this is something that's wrong with America. Uh, I noticed uh, over the weekend I was watching uh, HBO shows and it was uh, dealing with quote, Watergate, stupid, and uh, uh, it was all one-sided. You know, the American people, most of all, if you give them the facts and the truth, he deserves at least a fair shake. He is the president. Every president deserves this. They deserve criticism. They deserve a chance to. They should be acknowledged when they do something good. But the narratives of the media, which are driving the Democratic Party, and if I were, as a Democrat, would be am quite worried, I would be, if I were, you know, in, deeply involved in the election, I would be concerned because the media, um, uh, the CNN, the uh, uh, MSNBC, their hatred of Trump, their narrative is so negative that it is taking them, to, uh, the, dragging the Democrats to a place that I don't think they should want to be. And you could see this with the G7 coverage. Oh, my God, you'd have thought Trump had turned the world upside down. 
He merely, you know, um, the uh, he is asserting American primacy and, and at least fairness. And uh, but he gets no credit for any of that. It's always he's destructive and it's on the verge. I, I, I just think the American people have had it. They rate the media very low for a reason. And that's because the media has stopped being, Gary, an institution, uh, the mainstream media, where people are get facts. What they get is political narrative designed on the basis of partisan political beliefs. And to pretend that that's journalism is ridiculous. I've been in this business 50 years. I've never seen anything like it. And I noticed that Jimmy Carter a few months ago said the same thing. No president has been treated the way this one is. And when you treat the president with total disrespect, uh, you know, there, and he reacts to it, it's not going to be pretty. Well, how's that going to play out? I know in domestic politics, unemployment's way down, uh, record low numbers in some areas, employment is up, more jobs available than people, GDP, consumer confidence up. How can Democrats successfully counter these things uh, with negativity? They're pushing Russia collusion, even impeachment. Oh. Are those, is that a winning formula or a losing one? No, no, I, I think we have not yet totally defined the midterms. And I think that I have to say that's partly because the Republicans have no national strategy that I can detect. Um, the, um, I think the impeachment thing is a trap for the Democrats that they could pay a mighty price for. And uh, because the, the essentially you've got a lot of, you've got the party saying, oh, no, we're not talking about impeachment. But you have hundreds, dozens and dozens of candidates, at least, who are running out there as Democrats for the House or the Senate, who are already on record saying they will vote for impeachment, that they will vote to criminalize the, uh, excuse me, to weaponize the Constitution and the impeachment process in order to get rid of somebody they don't like. I don't think the American people think, not only is that not fair, but it's a frightening look of a downward slide in American politics and the hysteria. Uh, and so I think, for instance, let me just give you one example. Uh, Pruitt, uh, the, you know, they're complaining that he sent a secretary to go get a suit or something like no, that's never happened in life. And uh, at the same time, now, they want to criticize his environmental policies. There's real sympathy for that. There are many people who are concerned about that. But they're not going to policy. They're going to personal attack on everything. And it is, uh, I think most Americans are tuning it out. Well, what are most Americans that, saying, Pat? I mean, you've been polling for a long time. What is the mood of the country? The mood of the country is somewhat better than it's been in recent years. It's still very anti-establishment. The American people, and I have been chronicling this several years before 2016 and into 2016, and said, we're headed for, we're, we're headed, we're in a pre-revolutionary moment. The American people are about to uprise against what they believe in establishment that has failed America. And that's what happened, despite all of the things that uh, working against Trump he got elected, and uh, they can't deal with this. They don't ask themselves, what's wrong with us? Well, what's wrong with them is that when 70 percent of the American people believe the country is in decline, you know, getting up and saying how great we're all doing and aren't we great, the establishment and whatever you heard in 16 of the conventions and from the media, it doesn't sell. I mean, this is... Um, uh, there's a real analytic reason for it. There's great instability in the politics. There are many people, you know, most midterms are usually defined as, um, you know, if you don't like anything the incumbent president has done, you go out and vote against them. But I think this election needs to take on larger aspects and a much more critical question of what is, are they proposing to do other than, you know, drive Trump from office? And that is not a winning formula, nor is it when it extends to the idea that, you know, you know, we are work, we are we are work, we are hoping that America fails so we can win is not a very str real strategy. Well, it doesn't seem that they're going to change tactics any. Uh, but looking ahead, I know it's extremely early. Which type of Democrat is likely to win their party's nomination for president in 2020? And oh, God. do you think Trump will I be think, reelected? Well, I think at the moment I would put money on Trump because his opposition is so divided. The Democratic Party, the party I'm a member of, uh, is moving so far to the left. 
and so far out of the mainstream. And the candidates are trying to, tr to pardon the pun, trump each other on that. And uh, there is very little room for a uh, for someone like Jimmy Carter, who was an outsider, um, but uh, a centrist in a very liberal party, and um, and won an incredible nomination and election in '76. But and, they're, unli they're uh, unlikely but to have someone like that. Carter. Uh, I mean, they're unlikely to have. They probably need a more moderate uh, Trump type of character or candidate. Yes. Well, they would be as the outside party. You think more open outsiders? They're all insiders. The Democratic Party rigged its rules that way. And even now, they're fighting over this. But the instinct is to prove themselves first, uh, uh, which I think is a mistake. I think the disaster for the Democratic Party has been identity politics. Every group is a victim, and you treat every person based on how they look or what they are, rather than a what was the Democratic approach, a unifying message in behalf of common people, that unified people. This is all very divisive. It is a party at the moment in the, in the throes of total control by its ideological interest groups, whether that's on abortion or whether that's on, you know, um, gay rights or whatever. There is no moderating overall vision. And, 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 and that's the problem. Trump could be very vulnerable, but they uh, are looking at it today. I don't see how they managed to get it together. Well, and without a vision, the people perish, and in this case, exactly. the party I as well. Exactly. I almost said the same thing. Okay, Pat, we're out of time. Uh, Pat Cadell, we've appreciated you for many years. We'll talk to you again. Thank you for being with us. Great. Thank you.